Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a little glimpse at what I'm doing here in the garage. Again, not a step-by-step -step tutorial because this is the first time I've done one of these, so I'm not very familiar with it. I don't like to make tutorial videos unless I really know what I'm doing. So, uh, that being said, I still wanted to show you what I'm up to here and uh, let you know what's going on with this thing. So this is a 1997 Grand Marquis. My grandparents purchased this car <laughs> in July of 1997. Grandpa always wrote the purchase month and date of the vehicles that he bought on the hood of the car. So this car was purchased brand new. It's got right around 150,000 miles on it. And if you know your Crown Vicks, Grand Marquis, or any Ford 4.6 V8 well, you know that the intake manifold had a problem with this coolant crossover here. Now this one is the updated version. This one is uh, aluminum. So they fixed the first problem. The problem that occurred first in the older versions was this was plastic and it would crack and you'd lose all your coolant and the engine would overheat. Well, that happened years and years and years ago when I had the car. Golly, that was probably seven, eight years ago or more. So anyways, I've since given the car to my sister. The car was given to me. So I personally believe that if you get a gift, give a gift. So I gave the car to my sister and uh, it ran great. We had absolutely no problems with this car. 20 year old car, 150,000 miles. It was a great car. And then she called me one day and said that the uh, engine was misfiring, check engine light was flashing. So I told her, oh, don't drive it, get somewhere safe and shut it off. So I came out and looked at it and uh, I noticed there was coolant leaking around the intake manifold here by this uh, heater core pipe. So sure enough, as you can see, there's, if you look really close, yeah, there you go. You can see the crack right here. So there was coolant leaking down there. What happened was the coolant leaked out of the intake and then ran down into the spark plug holes of the cylinder heads and that in turn caused the misfire. The unfortunate thing was the car was pushed. It was overheated and uh, pushed to the point where it actually blew the head gaskets. So that's why the engine's torn apart to the extent that it is. And it's just amazing, you know, this is the newer style intake manifold and it's still cracked, lost coolant, and the engine overheated and this time we didn't catch it in time and it popped the head gaskets. So uh, I'm going to send the cylinder heads out. I'll give you a look at them over here. And the way I could tell the cylinder head gasket was blown, or gaskets, maybe both of them, who knows, was when I took the coolant uh, reservoir cap off, I got a nice whiff of raw exhaust fumes in the coolant. Anytime that happens, it's a really good sign of either a cracked cylinder head or a blown head gasket, most likely your head gasket. So here are the cylinder heads. And this is one of the things I really wanted to point out in the video. Look at how clean these things are. This vehicle was taken really good care of. And it just goes to show you that when you take care of your stuff, I mean, it can really last a long time. Look how clean that is. There is no sludge anywhere in these cylinder heads. I mean, you pull off a cylinder head of a car where they recommend going 10,000 miles between oil changes, you've already got a bunch of black crud and sludge built up in your cylinder heads here. But this is just perfectly clean. I mean, look at this camshaft. Everything is just, it's perfectly clean. I mean, these cylinder heads don't look that old at all, but these are 20-year-old cylinder heads with 150,000 miles on them, and they look so clean. It really comes down to preventative maintenance, doing your oil changes on time, not waiting forever to get the oil changed. It's just too bad that we didn't catch the overheating before it blew the head gasket on this car. Back over here on the engine, take a look at the cylinders here. You can still see the cross hatches. See those little scratches that are going sideways? That's from the honing process at the factory where they hone the cylinders out. It leaves those little scratches behind and what that does is it catches tiny little droplets of oil to make sure that the cylinder and the piston rings are well lubricated as they go up and down inside the engine block. And typically what you want to do is you want to drag your fingernail on the cylinder wall here and make sure it doesn't catch on anything. If there's any scratches or gouges in there, your fingernail will catch on that and it may require additional service. 
Now, if you see something like this, this discoloration here, this car sat for a couple months after we found out it had a blown head gasket and coolant leaked into this cylinder. And as you can see, the coolant stained the cylinder wall. Now there's really nothing you can do about this other than try to clean it up with some high alcohol content brake clean, but it's really not going to hurt it. Again, as long as there's no difference in uh, the cylinder wall surfaces here, as you're rubbing your finger up and down, you don't feel a change. Again, drag your fingernail along the cylinder wall. As long as it's all good, you'll be fine. It's really nothing to worry about. But it's just really cool to see how well... Uh, this engine held up after 150,000 miles and just again you know how good maintenance can really help an engine last a long time it's just so cool to see those uh, crosshatch marks in there from when it was honed at the factory well that's all for now I just wanted to show you guys that um, again no step-by-step -step tutorial here because I'm not an expert on this. this is the first time I've done one of these it's a little bit of a job but not too bad. I don't even have to have it on my lift here because I uh, don't really have to raise the vehicle up. I had to get underneath of it a time or two to get the exhaust manifolds loose from the catalytic converters. But we've got a stack of parts and some new parts coming in and we'll get this car back on the road and back together. And uh, i got to make sure it runs right because once it's all back together, it's making a trip from St. Louis to California. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Uh, stay tuned for more. I'll make some more videos about this thing as it starts to go back together.